Okay, so we're going to do two things. We're going to do one more example of converting a rational number to a decimal, and we're going to talk a little bit more about our first objective, which was being able to identify rational numbers. We can identify rational numbers in fraction form easily, right? We know that any integer as a ratio to another integer is going to give us a rational number. But what if it's in decimal form? Maybe decimal form, we don't know if it's a rational number. And so we're going to look at that. Uh, so one more example. Um, what would 0.5, sorry. Uh, what would uh, 10 out of 10? Mr. Schultz wanted me to do this example. 10 out of 10. Is this a rational number? Yes, 10 is an integer, 10 is an integer, and we know that that reduces to one whole, right? And one is a rational number. Okay, so we looked at some of our rational numbers and how they look. We converted them to decimals, and so we know how they look as decimals. What, how do we, how do we know if we just have the decimal? How do we know if it's rational or not? Uh, we know if it's a, an integer, then it's a rational number, okay? If we know it's a, an integer, we know it's a rational number. What if it has, we have a decimal, something like this, four, five, seven, three, four, five, seven, three. Is this a rational number? And this is, there are three cases where we can know that it's a rational number. Really, there's four cases, and I can't think of what they all are right now. But if we have an integer, then it's a rational number. We can write it as a ratio of two integers. If it's a repeating decimal, like this, four, five, seven, three repeats over and over and over again, it is a rational number. If it's a repeating decimal, but it's just one number over and over and over again, it's still repeating, we just don't have this big section of it repeating. So that's also a rational number. So those are, that's really just two cases because it's a repeating decimal, repeating decimal, there's a pattern. Um, I say, sometimes I differentiate a little bit between these two cases because they are a little bit different. This one you have to go a little ways before you find it repeating. Um, and then the last one, the one that I couldn't remember, is if you just have a terminating decimal. So if you have 0.25, then that is a rational number. Okay, anytime. So these are, the, these are the three slash sort of four cases. If you have an integer with no decimal, that is a rational number. If you have a repeating decimal, 0.333 or 0.666, any of those, then it is a rational number. If you have a repeating decimal with more numbers, but it still repeats, so we have it here, here, keeps going, that's still a rational number. And then if it doesn't repeat, if it terminates, so 0.25, nothing comes after that. That is also a rational number. So those are the three, maybe four cases that you will find rational numbers as decimals. Okay, so if you see a decimal and you want to say, well, is this a rational number? Because I know this is what you do in your free time, is you look at, you look at numbers and say, is that a rational number or is it not? Maybe you will start doing that now. Uh, hopefully, it's a lot of fun. Um, is it a whole number? Is it repeating? Is there a pattern in the decimal? Um, that goes for both of those. Or does it terminate? Okay, so next time you're at the dollar store, I guess the dollar store is a bad example. Next time you're at the store and you see something that's $1.25, hey, that's a rational number because it doesn't repeat. It doesn't go past the 0.25. Okay, and that's all for this video.